Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel the BI Masters. I'm back with a new video on Microsoft Fabric on a new feature which is called the Data Agents. It was previously called the AI Scales but I'm calling it a new feature because it's recently renamed as Data Agents in the Fabcon. But I'll tell you what Data Agents are, why are they beneficial to you, what you can do with Data Agents. I'll also demonstrate a live Data Agent to you to showcase you know, how you can connect a data, data Agent to your lake house, how you can connect to a semantic model and what you can do with that. But before we do that, if you're new to the channel, please don't forget to subscribe. Watch this video till the end. And, you know, if you like this video, give me a thumbs up. Share this video with your friends, you know, with your fellow developers. And also click on the notification icon to be straight more updates on, you know, on this channel. For people who don't know me, my name is Pratamesh. And I've been working on Microsoft technologies for around 17 plus years into the space of data intelligence, business intelligence, data warehousing and analytics. I'm also a Microsoft certified trainer in the space of Power BI, Power Platform, Microsoft Fabric and Copilot. And without any delay, let's, let's do one thing. Let's deep dive into what data agents are. So before we start about knowing the data agents, you know, please note that data agents is a preview feature in Microsoft Fabric. And, you know, we expect it to be GA soon. And now what is a data agent? So data agent is nothing but a QA tool in Microsoft Fabric. So it's same to what we have as a Q&A tool in Microsoft Power BI where we you know, query our report or you know semantic model. Here it is a, it is at a more advanced level where, where it will help you to you know, get like if the questions you ask will be reverted back as you know SQL queries or DAX. So that's one of the key elements. It is more advanced. It can interpret the data. It gives out it gives the output as well. And you can actually question the data agent in a more you know simple plain English in, in a natural language to get you know get the best use of it. You can also instruct data agents the way you want it to function. Like if I want to have a chat with the agent, it will give the output in a chat. If I, want to, if I would ask it to give output in a table, it will give output in a table and so on. So these are custom instructions that you can provide. Also in terms of semantic models, if I want to say, if I want to give it a custom instruction, such as, you know, if I'm having a column of total QTY, I want to say that this is a measure for quantity. I can instruct the measure, I can instruct the agent to say, you know, if anything related to quantity is, is prepared, you have to refer the total QTY columns, Same, something like that. And you can also share this data agent with, you know, your fellow developers, fellow team members, so that you know, everybody can use that. So this is what data agents really mean. Uh, prerequisites for using data agents, you know, there are quite a few. One is like you need to be on Fabric F64 capacity or higher than that. Power BI Pro, this is not going to work. Premium per user is not going to work, you know, no, no. Use below Fabric F64 are not going to work for data agents. So this is a new feature that Microsoft is kind of, you know, ensuring users on the higher capacitors to use it more often. You need to have an XML endpoint that needs to be turned on in Fabric tenant. You also need to have, you know, Fabric data agent, copilot switch and the cross geo AI processing enabled to use the data agents. Once you have these prerequisites ready, you have a data agent ready for use. But also to use that, you need to have some data. So you should either have data in the lake house, data in the warehouse, you should have some semantic model or a KQL database to work with the data agents. So these are the prerequisites that are required. Now, once you create a data agent, how data agent actually works is on four to five different areas. So one is like, you know, it first is leverages the Azure OpenAI APIs and LLMs to, you know, convert your simple English into structured queries. That's one. It doesn't require any kind of knowledge for you to know in terms of coding. So it's plain, simple English. So once you start asking the questions and you, you know provide instructions for the data agent, it will look at you know question parsing and the validation of that. So it will interpret your question. It will look at what kind of access you have on the uh, on the data agent. Then it look at the data source. What kind of access do you have on the data source? It will, it will evaluate the data source to understand what kind of you know schema is present, and it will also look at the custom instructions and the context that you have given. Once the data source is identified, then it will look at you know the the, the tool that will create your queries from the agent as output. That's where it will use NL2. So if you're using a SQL database, it uses NL2. If you're using Power BI ML tech models, it will use, you know, NL2 DAX. If it is KQL databases, it will use NL2 KQL. So this is the tool that, you know, helps you in getting that output back. Once it interprets that the query generation, it will look at the validation. So that where it will look at your table, it will give you accuracy, you look at the structure as output. If it's a chat or if it's a table, it gives you, it creates that output. And then it executes that query against the source such as, you know, table summary inside. So this is how actually the data agent works. So when you're working with data agents, you know, there are, there are certain limitations that you need to take care of. One is, you know, query capability, you know, it only reads DAX and SQL queries, you know, it doesn't read, write, update. It cannot create any visuals. The data agents can't create any visuals like the way we have in Power BI Q and it creates a visual. But, you know, this is fairly on the data side. 
but it will, either it will create you a SQL query or it will create you a DAX query. So that is how data agents work. Other limitation is it cannot process on PDF, doc, files and so on, you know. Uh, then a lot of, you know, configure data structures, you know, only there are a set of data structures that can be connected as I said, you know, lakehouse, warehouse, semantic model, KQLs. These are the only ones that works. Uh, max of max to max five data sources can work at a time. You can have a semantic model and I can have a database. I can, you know, use a data agent to ask questions and switch from the data source the way I wanted to. Any data tables which is more than 100 columns, data agent is not going to work. Only optimal tables, you know, less than 25 with descriptive names are going to work. In terms of language, there is only English as of now that you can use. A query complexity, majorly it's more in terms of very simple plain English as I mentioned about it. In terms of Power BI, if you hide any particular table or column, data agent is not going to identify that because it's not a part of your semantic model. And also, no issue that if you're using it, you know, on any of the UI or assistance, assistance API, it is not going to work. You have to republish it again and again. So these are a few limitations of data agents. But apart from that, it, it works really well. And, you know, we have the demo. I'm going to show you. I'll create a data agent and I'll show you how it works. And that's how, you know, we can let's start with the demo now. All right. So now we are in Microsoft Fabric and I will quickly show you how to create a data agent. But before that, you know, data agents, the preview feature, as I mentioned, I've enabled all the prerequisites. Also, I've created a lake house, which has three tables, a customer table, which in, has a custom, customer information, a product table, which has all the product information, and also a fact table, which contains the transactions. And these three tables are you know, linked to each other on the basis of customer number and the product number. I've also created a demo sales model, semantic model. The semantic model has the relationship between all these three tables. I've created a few measures as well, which are nothing but total products, total sales, and so on. I'll do one thing. I'll quickly create a data agent to show it in action. Now, if I go to the workspace, I click on new item, and I filter this by data agent. And if you look at this, I have the data agent name. I can quickly provide a data agent name, sales agent, and I click on create. The moment I click on create, Fabric will start creating a new data agent and I click on get started. Now, the very first thing here is, you know, you see the data agency instructions, example, queries, create, chat, publish and so on. I'll first add the data sources. So, for, for the first demo, I'll do a lake house insertion. So, I'll select the lake house, I'll add the lake house in here and it will validate the lake house. Once the lake house is validated, we can select our tables and we can, you know, let the data agent will start working on it. So, I'll select the tables. So, I'll say I want to select just the sales table. And I would say, you know, uh, sum of total price. And I would move myself here quickly. And I would, I just want to look at the total price. I'll instruct a data agent to give me the sum of total price. And I can come here, I can show you this is the total price. So basically sum this entire column together. And by the time it runs, it, since it's the first time, it'll take a while to understand the sales fact table and, you know, try to put some queries on it interpret the question and it'll give the output. So if you look at this, it gives the output that sum of total price is, you know, 3.3 .3 million and this is my total price and this is the SQL query. So on the lake house, it will basically do nothing but create a SQL query. I can, you know, basically go and query it more. I can just quickly say I want, I have a product table as well. Now give me the total price. What's the total price by, per category? And I will ask the question it because now I'm trying to look at the product as well as the customer because the category sits in the product table and the product number is joined with the sales table on the basis of the product number. Then it should basically work. And that's what I'm trying to interpret here to see whether, you know, relationships on the relationship, whether how complex, what is the level of complexity it works upon. So let's see whether he's able to join the data together and give us the output. So let's give it a few seconds or a few minutes to work. And let's wait. And in the meantime, if you have any questions, you know, let me know in the comment below whether you like the video so far. You know, hit the thumbs up button and subscribe to my channel. If you're not already done, I've seen a lot of people just watching the video but not subscribing to it. And please do that. And that really helps me and, you know, keeps me motivated. You can also do one thing. You, know, you can follow me on LinkedIn and also follow me on TopMate if that's the case. Now, if you look at this, it basically went and created a SQL query where it joined the sales on the product number and it gave the output. In this way, you can basically go ahead and, you know, create your own SQL query. So this is very beneficial for SQL, for the people who want to understand how SQL is getting written. I can also third, add the third customer table here and I can say uh, list 
top five customers with total price and i let's just query this and now i want the i want the list of five customers from which has a total price so let's see how it works across whether it is able to rank it or not i'm trying to go one more step so it gave me the query very nicely it's fast and once you start using it you know it becomes faster and faster and faster so if you look at it now it's able to analyze the data and if you look at this it group the customer by description it gave use a top five function which is very very nice as a part of sql now what i'll also try to do is i'll minimize this i'll unselect everything from here okay i add a new data source which is my sales model i'll now bring in the sales model semantic model that i have which has a relationship which has the measures so here what i'll do is till now if you look at it i have not given the data agent any instructions but when i'm looking at total price and so on because i'm using you know total columns and i'm using total price as is but i want to call price as sales so you know i'm just giving an instruction to the agent that display all the results in a table the total customers is the count of customer number total sale total sales is total price total quantity is sum of quantity and total products is the number of products so now let's do one thing i come to the data model i select this three columns the three tables here this is all unselected and now say what is total sales by unit from the product and now let's query it now this is where when you're working with semantic model this is where you know a different thing appears when it comes down you know rather than the sql queries so let's give it a minute because it's running on the model for the very first time what this will do is because it's a semantic model it will always try to generate a dax query for you it will take a while for you know for it to understand and if you look at this we have three units which is the box tube pack if i come to the product here and i filter by the unit i have three units here if i go back to my agent i see it give me the total sales by by this three units and it analyzes data model gave the output and it generated a dax query by summarized columns i can also try to do is you know uh, create a new calculation on total sales called sales by quantity and divide sales by total quantity set by total sales and let's see what it does because i'm now creating a new calculation and i want to understand how this actually helps me working on this data so first where we have queried it is able to query it nicely i'll also show you how this query can be further used in the data model as well so let's see whether it is able to you know generate a new calculation so see it gave a new calculation this new calculation is called total sales by quantity and it gave the output as well i can use this for a kpi card so it gives this it gives me you know define the measure sales by quantity and divide by total quantity and evaluate so this is very nice you can you know use a data agent to actually go and you know create your own measures as well i'll just try one more uh, query I want to give a list top 10 customers by total sales. Same with things I use in the query, I'll use it here. So let's see how what is the query that it creates here in the DAX. And if you look at this, this is very, very, very helpful. You know, if you're into data analysis, you know, uh, if you want to query your data, understand how things are, maybe you can use, you know, SQL queries tomorrow to create a Sub query which you want to use as a direct query into your model and this will be very helpful so if you look at this now it gave me a total sales and it also gave me a tax query for this evaluate top 10 because i'm evaluating this i'm not asking it to create a measure what i can also do is now i can take these queries and i can break take it back to my data model so i'll go, come to my workspace i'll open my sales model and i'll write dax query so it will open up a new window or so this new window will basically be used for me to write DAX query. So this will open up the DAX query view in which you know I'll use my data agent and you know put start analyzing the queries here. Now I'm into my data model view here. I go to my data agent this here and I will copy this query evaluation query and this is my numbers and let's do one thing let's try to you know put the results here and I take this out if you look on the right side I have the model here it has all these measures that we've created everything i can just come and you know 
term and you know put this so if you see it has given me a error now this error is nothing but where i am having the comment but take the comment out i evaluate this dax query it will evaluate the query from the model and it should probably you know give me the output so if you look at the output 4267386 come here if uh, 4.36.4 it is rounding up here but here it is giving with the decimal number so this is good i can also take the query that i created above and i can copy this and i can define a new measure i'll come into the query i'll just select this comment it out i'll run this query quickly if you look at this and i can update the model with changes i'll update the model and it will now create a sales quantity this is very good in terms of creating you know my measures as well so this is very very nice when i'm looking at creating a data agent i can use a data agent for creating sql queries i can use it for creating data models and this is how you know it is very helpful for you you can give the instructions to the data model the way you want it to work and it will function accordingly and this is how you work with data agents within microsoft fabric and now you've seen how you can create data agents in Microsoft Fabric, what they mean, what they really are, you know, what how you can interpret the data, how you can create SQL queries, how can you can create DAX queries on top of it. So in a nutshell, data agent is a very powerful tool if you want to use it. And if it if it if you can use it nicely, it is very, very, very helpful for you. And with this, you know, I would like to end this video. If you like this video, please don't forget to hit the thumbs up, subscribe, subscribe, please subscribe. It motivates me to do more videos. And also let me know in the comments if there is any new more videos that you want me to do. With this, you know, this is Ratame Sable signing off from today's video. Thank you and have a nice day, guys. Cheers.